gon' bring it to the table. Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. My dad walk on. Man, man. Hey, got a little sleep. Did a little work yesterday. Yeah. Now we back, man. It's going down, man. Say, man, we got a guy in here today, man. I've been knowing him for many, many years. We have been knowing for many, we many years. We've both been knowing him for many, yes, many years. Sir. He's been a, uh, he's been a friend. Mm -hmm. He's he, he pretty much guided us in the right directions as we went through this business strives of having our business over the Her years that we've store. known him, right? Yes, sir. The clothing store is he he's he's made great impact, man. Not only that, man, just just in life in general, talking, man, to man, having somebody to talk mm -hmm. to, same kind of same age and everything man and talking about something check it man kenyatta sands in the building thanks man thanks for having me man hey man what's going on man come a long way bro say man look man hey you you go way way back she about to get all your information too that's what she do she i i kind of just i'm all over the place yeah but she comes at you in a way to where she want to know everything in detail about Kenyatta Sands, right? Things that we've never known. They, yeah, because mm -hmm. we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 Sounds we like diving a setup, in. Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we diving in, man. We diving in, man. Shout out, man. You put the Can good, you, you put the good smile on it. <laughs> you know, I got you. Yeah, all right. So, all right. so, man, just, uh, man, you, Los Angeles. LA, baby. Wow. And man. originally from LA. Originally yeah. from LA. Yeah. I okay. mean, not like, you know, some people claim LA been living in Pasadena. Like, I'm straight up Crenshaw, Washington. Wow. Okay. And because the business that you're in, a lot of people will born somewhere else and move there because of that business. Right. But you were born and raised and ended up in that business. Yeah, I'm 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 well ingrained in LA. Like seriously. So going back as a child, um, elementary school, mm -hmm. is that what you always wanted to do? No. In fact, um I wanted to when I was in um high school, I went to Morehouse to become a lawyer. Mm. My wow. Dad, my dad was a big time lawyer in LA. Okay. Yeah, he was like the Johnny Cochran that nobody knew. You know I mean? <laughs> but he was a bad mamma jamming. Like he was 6'3, always had the big hats, always had the nice suits. So you wanted to be a lawyer only because he was a lawyer or he made you? Go nah, for law? I mean, it just seemed like the life to live, you know, because okay. we had LA Law back in those days. So mm -hmm. there was a lot mm -hmm. of like law shows. So it made it look really exciting. And what um, was your mom? My mom was a social worker. Social work? Yeah. Okay, and they were still together? When what? Your mom, oh, during that time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they divorced when I was 13. When you were 13? Yeah, okay. they divorced when I was How 13. did that affect you? That's a good question. Um, it's kind of like, you, you love your mom, so you don't want to see her suffer. You know, you know your dad was doing things that wasn't good, mm -hmm. and it was just, you know, for me, it was, it was kind of like, all right, you know, it didn't work out. Yeah, it yeah. It would have liked it to have worked out, you know, because we had uh, a good life, but, you know, to see how she was, you know, going through it. It, yeah. just, it just didn't seem like something she was, you know, deserving to. to so do. Yeah. did you move with her or did you stay with him? I actually moved with her. With her. So yeah. how many siblings did you have? I have um, two brothers and a sister. Two brothers and sister, younger, older. And she had three children. My dad had another. another uh, One outside. Another son outside. Yeah. After okay. the break, before, before the breakup? Before, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's, that's one. I mean, before the, us. Oh, before you. Yeah, okay, before, okay, yeah, we okay. were the second second round. So. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, she took all the kids with her, uh, except, except from the one that she he yeah, had Yeah, because he was before. 18 by the time I turned 13. Well, I was 13, he was 19. So he, okay. my dad was like, old school, like, you 18, get out the house. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Straight I, just, up. I had a guy on here, in there, uh, Sean Cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, funny you brought that up. And he said that, uh, he, he matter of fact, he made this statement on Vlad as well. He said that he don't feel like it was good uh, that uh, parents kicked their son out at 18 because sometimes, because they're not Any mature. of their children, yeah, really. Any of, or they, any of them, because you feel like, you know, they still have some maturing to do. So you, it's not good that we, we're the only culture that forces our children out. Right. Like everybody else, they, you know, let them stay until they get established. And he said that because his mother and father divorced, it caused, it was better because it made it to where he was able to establish, say, cheese. And he helped, you know, um, pay the bills for his mom and Correct. help her as, so, you know, so that saved him some money. He didn't have to pay all the bills. He just paid some. Correct. And he was able to stack his money up. <laughs> but the, but don't, going no, back no, to... No, I don't want to oh. get off that yet because I wanted to say that when, because he stayed in, home, in the house, he became, now he's a millionaire, mm -hmm. but he stayed almost till he was 30. 
Got it. But but I don't know if that happens with every kid. Like most kids, no, that most stay black kids that in the house till they're thirty. A lot of Hispanics, it think, does. Think about the thirty year olds that you see staying stay with their mother. Usually, it don't work out like that. Right. I mean, my my brother kind of stayed with my mom's for a, for a minute, you know, on and off. But um, the oldest one, yeah, it, it didn't it didn't bode well for him. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, plenty of couches, plenty of people to try to find, you know, who to live with. And the crazy thing about it, we had the biggest house you can imagine at the time. And I was like, dang, why do he have to look? Why do he have to go? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you know, him and my mom didn't get to get along with each with each other because it was it was a very tragic situation. Like you know, my mom, I don't know was I don't know if he was messing with my dad at the time that he was married to my brother's mom, mm -hmm. but um, his, his mom got murdered. Wow. Mm. Wow. And, you know, there was suspicion that my dad did it. Wow. She was, she was uh, sad, man, but she was, she, you know, he came home, found her tied up, dead. Wow. And, and so his oldest son, which was, that's the mom's son, he felt that way as well? Yeah, they were just weren't getting along with each other. I mean, it was just like, you know, whether you, whatever story you want to hear, you want to hear mm -hmm. side, hear my mom's side. I mean, a lot of it's like, you know, he would kind of play her and vice versa, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a very odd situation because she had to take on a kid knowing that his mom's side of the family couldn't stand her. Wow. Right. Wow. You know what I mean? So that was that was difficult. And then at the same time, it's like, you know, because he, he, you know, he lived with us. So he grew, I grew up with my big brother. Right. Um, and you have a good relationship with oh, him? Oh, he's great. I mean, he's an awesome dude. Like, okay. love that dude to death, man. Seriously. Okay. Um, Your mom is a strong woman to hear those rumors and still be in that relationship. You know, you started looking over your shoulder like, okay, is it going to be my turn? Well, yeah, but she obviously didn't think he did it. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But L.A. was, L.A. is crazy like that. You know, my dad, rumors and stuff like that. I mean, like my that. dad dealt with some very, like, you know, being a black lawyer those days, like, you know, the, the kind of clients you would get would be them. And he did criminal law. He did everything. Okay. But criminal was part of it. So, obviously, okay. you know, he knew a lot of dudes that would, you know, were doing some dastardly things. Right, right. According to my dad, he didn't do it. But, you know, according to their side of the family, who knows? So how did um, the breakup, I know he said, how did the breakup take a toll on you? But when I'm thinking about it, you said your mom, she endured some things. And so I'm sure you saw some things that led up to the breakup. Yeah. And um, I know that some people can be a product of past, you know, parents' relationships and that right. can become you. How can, you know, how did you see that and be like, okay, I'm not going to do that or... You know, because some people what? say I'm not going to until I'm not, end up not going to let that. my children become victim right. of the same circumstances. Well, um, okay, so like you know, part of the arguments were you know had to do with my my my, my big brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. I figured that. So there was sometimes like there were things that I saw that was like okay. I, I, <laughs> so one time I came home, you know, and my brother was preparing the house for a party. Mm. Whoa. Paid me five dollars. <laughs> not the <to> snitch. <laughs> no, not the snitch, right? So of course I didn't snitch. And then like all of a sudden it was a complete blowout argument. You can hear down the block. Wow. My dad and my mom going off, and my mom is like, "Look, I found some weed underneath the sink, so on and so forth." It was definitely a party in this house. My dad obviously asked my son. I mean my brother, and then uh, he was like, "Nah, we didn't have no party." Did you snitch? And I'm over thinking to myself, like, damn. You know they gonna come to you. You know they gonna come back. But I'm saying they're going off. I mean, like, I mean, like, ah, like you lying about my son. You know, just that whole thing. And I'm mm. like, man, dad, you wrong on this one. Mm. I did have to snitch, though. I know you snitched. <laughs> I knew you snitched. And my brother to this day can't stand me for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was like, "Did he get his five dollars back?" Be like, "Give me my money back." I said, you I said maybe, maybe you could have paid me ten, but <laughs> I promise you, like that was the one thing that because my dad, you know, eventually had to go back to my brother, you know, give him a little something. Yeah, because he found out that it was, you know, was he was lot. wrong. He right. was wrong. Yeah. So did you? Okay. So you went to Morehouse to become a lawyer. Did you actually finish? I finished Morehouse. I actually went there and I took. The courses that you would take to be a lawyer. Okay. So I, 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 I um, majored in poli sci and with a pre law minor. And it was cool because you was able to study in different places in different schools. So I mm -hmm. went to like uh, an Atlanta University, which is actually part of the same campus. Wow. Okay. And uh, took some business courses there. 
Um, and there was a lot of, you know, because at Morehouse, it's a liberal arts school. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to take all the classes as if you was in high school. So you take in econ, religion, you know, all those type of stuff. So mm -hmm. there's a there's a wide, in biology, everything. Everything you would normally take in high school, you got to right. take there. And then you have specific classes. So being part of poli sci, obviously, I mean, that's, it was cool because you was able to kind of, you know, get into the um, political side of the world. You know, mm -hmm. I've actually went to D.C., I can tell you the story of how I started the clothing. The clothing yeah, thing, I was about to say, because in the middle of you going to school and doing all of that, um, where did the fashion come into everything? Yeah. So let me, let me, let me and go And were back. you the flyest person going to school because of how you dress? So let me go back a little bit. Let's backtrack a little bit. So in L.A., we had um, a thing called bumper heads and Easties. So bumper head and Easties. Bumper what head is that? and Easties. So the West Siders, which we were, this mm -hmm. is where I would consider myself West Side. So if you're West Side of like, I don't know, like if you're just like West Side, you know what okay. I'm saying? Over by Crenshaw, maybe West of Crenshaw. Mm -hmm. So we call it, if he was West of Crenshaw, he was called a West Sider. But I lived West of Crenshaw at one point, and then I also lived just tad east of it, but whatever. So the West Siders was like you had this whole group of kids that were growing up in like View Park. You know, Ladera, Baldwin Hills, and that's like the most, you know, uh, financially, I mean, it's just the most, the richest area for black folks. Mm -hmm. So you had all these little fly little kids having parties at the house. So every house party that you went to, you would have like these big pools and, you know, these nice houses overlooking the whole city. You know, they all had views, parents had money. So you want to be part of that because that was just a fly scene to be in. So, but we were just into like, fly stuff just having parties hanging out and then eventually dance crews became a big thing so like there's like comedians like alex thomas that's that's probably like one of the ones that people know but he's one of the guys that i grew up with mm -hmm. you know alex thomas is a comedian yeah no 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 mm -hmm. i'm thinking about this dance crew around about 85 86 uh so when you go to 85 86 then you're talking more like breaking pop yeah yeah no mm -hmm. no what what what, what dance crew, crew you talking, you talking about? about are you talking about the 90s so in our age no, our age is it's like around that time but okay there's a there's a period between like I would probably say like eighty six to like nine ninety because you figure you know eighty six that's when you had the show come out mm -hmm. you know uh, Dougie Fresh mm -hmm. yeah 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 so Crush right. grooving and all that so the, uh but see like before that it's like it was breaking yeah so you had dance crews that was breaking mm -hmm. you know so all your little dance crews we had one out in L A too my brother actually had a group called the Shake City Rockers um, but no there was a moment right when I was hitting high school where we do these competitions and it was a moment in time in LA, I promise you LA was the flyest place to ever be. I'm telling you, cause it was like, you had the house parties, you had hotel parties, then you had these events at these places called like the Veteran Auditorium, all these big places. And so we started doing these dance competitions. Just to kind of give you an idea, if you remember Heart and Soul, they used to dance behind uh, Bobby Brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so that, they kind of came at the tail end of it. So the whole running man and all that kind right, of good right, stuff. So right, yeah, right. so they kind of came out. There was another uh, another guy named Oliver. It was uh, Madonna did a whole video. Um, I think it was called Justify My Love or something like that. Or one mm -hmm. of those one of those one of those things. But anyways, so dance became a big thing. That's like soul soul train and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so being when we started getting into fashion, it was it was like you know having the suits with the you know with the straight with the straight padded, you know, padded shoulders. Mm -hmm. So your shoulders was popping. Then you mm -hmm. had the white socks yeah, and then yeah, you had yeah, the, yeah, 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 you the had padded right. shoes. So we were dressing, just to give you an idea where dressing comes from. So we were dressed as part of this whole crew. So it was more of a mod, like more of a mod suited. So we would go to Artvox and buy a whole bunch of old suits, have them tapered up at the bottom to, to, to kind of emphasize the the movements, you know, so we had, you know, so a lot of, like like the Cabbage Patch, I don't remember the yeah, Cabbage Patch, yeah, man. Yeah, stop yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. So a lot of the dance. The prep, so, nigga, stop playing, man. We, so we all was, that. So we was the first one that, yeah, the prep, exactly. So <laughs> we would do, we yeah. had like competitions, like really big competitions. Not a lot of people videotaped them, so it's not like something that's mainstream that you mm -hmm, would know. Mm -hmm. But if you was in LA, you knew. Wow. So we was the bumper heads because we can dance, right? So people, women associated you with your group more so than you as a person. Okay. You know, so that's Alex from the Romeo. So Alex mm -hmm. had a group called the Romeos. There's all these fly dudes, you know, all these real super fly, I mean, super fly dudes. And um, so part of our, our dressing was, we were super fly at the clubs, whatever. And then we kind of brought that to our individual school. Certain mm -hmm. schools were already on it, like Fairfax, but like Palisades was not on it. Mm -hmm. So they were just like, whatever, everybody just rock, you know, so, but the bumper heads were the dancers, super fly. 
The ECs, on the other hand, were the gangsters, the drug dealers, and all that, and their and their gear was like, you know, Chuck Taylors, you know, okay. khakis creased, you know, looking like they say straight walked out of like, you know. I, I, and I don't want to break in on, on on what you're saying, but it, during the time that you guys was doing the, uh, the these uh, nice fly suits with the gang violence, like it was during that time in that in the cities, did y'all have to stay color coordinated? Yeah, like I said, we weren't even. Nowhere. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah, we they were in suits, so the suits they didn't have the red or. The well, we wouldn't wear suits every day, so our no, day, no. our day, our daily dress was was surfer. Okay. So okay. we was big in surfer gears like Maui and Sun, um, stuff like that. So we wore t-shirts and shorts, and so a lot of stuff that kids wearing like have been wearing recently with mm -hmm. the Vans and all that. We would rock Vans. We would rock the tapered Levi's five hundred ones and a t-shirt that mm -hmm. was in a backpack. How did you get into the clothes though? So I'm getting Yeah, there. let's get there. So you know what I'm um, wanting to hear about this. So I, I, I hate to be long winded, but th that's part of why I got into fashion because mm -hmm. you had to be a fly guy at the club, right? Number one, and then uh, so then went out. I got best dress in, as, as a senior in high at school. At the school, right? Oh, so really? Be, because so. nobody else at that school was dressing. I oh, got, I was I yeah. Got that. So I had crazy sweaters. I had suits. I had I mean not suits but shoes. That was that was dope. But I would you know put my thing together. Mm -hmm. So that's number one best dress summer you know but then i actually had an econ class in uh in my senior year where they where we like made a mock corporation so we made a corporation we sold stocks to people so on really? and so forth so i was the ceo i own stocks and i was the the, the contracted designer so i designed the t-shirt made money from that because the company had to pay me for the artwork. So you started doing all that stuff in high school. So I had a t-shirt and we made money and I was really good at it. I, mm -hmm. I actually was good with business. My business, I mean, like seriously, we even even had a mock like uh, program that was dope because it would like, you know, it'll introduce new factors that you can add to your business to determine how you were going to be successful as a and business. And when people think about LA, they think about fashion anyway. So it's like almost everybody who is in LA, they feel like you have something to do with fashion regardless. I mean, it was about being fly out there. Right. You know, and it I still mean, is somewhat, except for I'm it's much more of a laid back style. Well, we had that part as your casual every day, but then like we had to, you know, go out because I got to tell somebody like, look, back in those days, it was a club everywhere. It was a 24 hour city until gang violence became the prevalent. prevalent. Mm -hmm. And that was just, you know, you, you shook your head when you're like, yo, are you serious? Like it, it didn't have to go there because people say the thing is, this is why I don't glorify gangster rap. It's because I, at one point, everybody had their own little groove. You know what I mean? Gang violence has always been going on in LA, but it was in his pocket. But once you kind of brought it to the forefront, then it became everywhere. And I was like, nah, y'all needed to keep it where it was. But is it, it's not <laughs> as bad as it used to be, is it? I Man. think in certain ways, it's because just, we've you're been not to in the LA. know-how though. No, because we've been to LA, right? And we've driven down, you know, Crenshaw, certain things. But every time when we hear about those streets, they make it sound so bad, like, nah, you ain't. can't even go down there and drive down there. It's not like that. It's just, okay, it's like this. Like, for one, nobody's dumb enough to want to walk around looking, you know, blood or crib. I've seen a guy do it, right? About three years ago. Remember I seen that guy yeah. on all red with the beach cruiser, with the red beach cruiser? With, yeah. yeah. No, no, those but days. But back in the days, they used to. They, they used, used to, to, you know, rep their brands. But Everybody was in red, Yeah, but blue. that was before that drive-by. When that drive-by and then Which drive-by was that? It's just, you know, people drive just, in general. Just in general? Okay. Yeah, they would just seriously just, you know, see you in the streets and just... Kill you. Yeah. I remember those days. I, I so, that's why, so that's why they stopped wearing their colors because they don't want to just because be... Because it, it wasn't so much about the the the, um, the set. It was more or less like, you know, it became drugs. So you had crack that came into it because you figured that came pretty pretty big and then all of a sudden everybody's into selling drugs now. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't so much like there was no it's a loyal, business. There's no loyalty so much. Yeah, like, right. you know. It's more about the money. Let me get back to these clothes though, because I really am interested right. on how you how you were able to, because you end up working with people like Carl Kanai and all type of people. Well, knowing them, you know, and during the same time period, because mm -hmm. you didn't just get into these clothes, you've been really doing this. So that's what I want to try to tackle. You yeah. know what I mean? So uh, went to school. And then around, so yeah, I figure I, I graduated in 92. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I went to, uh, so this is an interesting story. Mm -hmm. All right, so I went to D.C. for an internship. Befriended this guy. And, and that's for clothing internship or that no, was the law? I was. I that went, was the law internship you're Yeah, so about. I went for poli sci, right. so I, I went to the Hills. I went to D.C., so I mm -hmm. was, uh, Julian Dixon was the congressperson I worked for as an intern. And I was probably the only one that got paid a stipend, so I got paid okay. a little money to mm -hmm. do it. 
And, um, but I befriended this guy, right? So then like, it was a small world. So I'm hanging out with him one night. He's like, yo, we gotta go pick up my friend cause she's got, she's got all the connects in DC. So we go over to this woman's house, right? Her name is Drew Dixon. Okay. You can look her up. She's actually pretty famous now. Go to Drew Dixon. Her mom was running for mayor, the next mayor, because at that time you had um, Marion Barry. Mm -hmm. He was under investigation for, for doing crack. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm in the house. She's on the phone with my ex-girlfriend from high school. <laughs> Mind you, DC on the phone. And this is school. LA compared to so I'm in, yeah, so I'm in D.C. talking to her. She's talking to her. And they're sorors. They're actually sorors. They're going to the same college. They're both going to Stanford. Mm -hmm. And then I look on the wall. I started noticing pictures of the guy I'm with with her. Mm. So I'm like, well, first of all, you with my ex? Y'all cool? We seen you chatting? This is crazy. Wow. And you told him that that's what that was your ex? We were just sitting there bugging like, yo, this is crazy. Like the, the chance... Right. You know, meeting each other. Was and great. going all the way across. Yeah. You know, uh, long story short, Moms isn't being the next mayor of, of, uh, of D.C. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can look her up, Sharon Prack Dixon. Okay. Um, what was the daughter name again? Drew Dixon. Drew, Drew Dixon. Dixon. Now, she was the one who came out against Russell, Rus I mean, Russell um, Simmons. Okay. Oh, okay. In the, in the Me Too movement. Yeah. So she's big yeah. in the Me Too movement. Okay. Um, Russell won that, though, didn't he? She was an exec at Def Jam, and yeah, so she's like, yeah, he did all kind of crazy things. Yeah, but I'm saying, but he won, right? I don't know. Just look it up. <laughs> Just look it up. He's I, like, I'm. I'm gonna they stay dropped out of that it. One. They definitely dropped it. I'm gonna stay out of that one. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so <laughs> long story short, we hang out at a, a Greek fest. So we go to Philly, you know. So my ex girlfriend comes out from LA to mm -hmm. come and kick it with us. So we're all in Philly, so all together. So a friend of mine is like, hey man, I need you to go watch this this booth of mine for a second. I need to go make a run, whatever. So I'm sitting there selling his t-shirts and I get a wad of cash within an hour. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself like, this seems kind of fun. So as soon as I went back to, um, to Atlanta, I had put all my money in the books. I bought a keyboard because I like playing music. I bought a brand new keyboard. Then I put the money, but whatever I had left, I had $300 left to put on the t-shirt. And that was my very first t-shirt. had a question mark on it. And on the back it said, never question who I am. Black, strong, intelligent, and positive. Wow. That's cool. And uh, so then that that's shirt. That's the first positive wear. Yes, sir. Wow. And that's Where's why that you shirt came at? up. Uh, I still have it. I still sell it. Yeah, I need that shirt. Yeah. That's the one I need. I want it to mean something. And that's the one you see Will Smith wearing on my Instagram. He's wearing that one in orange. Yeah. 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 But that one blew up. I mean, it, it, yeah, because it what it says. Yeah, it's powerful. It was kind of a take off of public enemy. Never question what I am. God knows when I come up from the heart. So mm. it's just yeah. never question who I am. You know what I mean? I was, and that was because at that time, you got to imagine. It's hard to imagine now because we didn't have no black president. Wait a minute, you skated no past the fact that Will Smith was wearing it. What, what, when he wore it? What, how did that happen? So it was a, it was an episode where him and and uh, Tootie was getting together. Mm. Did you place that? On the um, that's when I was in show? L.A. and then there's, there's yeah there's there's a stylist that yeah that took it put it on. Wow, that's okay. dope, man. Yeah, we've had like man, we had. I Rex. know Tupac wore some of your stuff as well, right? Yeah, I was actually I was actually there when Tupac did that. Wow. Yeah, that yeah. was cool. So in this game is really who you know. So knowing those stylists or knowing people who can get product placement on certain people. It was new. You gotta imagine. You gotta imagine. There's no in '91. There was no supposed black owned brands period mm. so we were the first one it was me cross colors uh african-american college lines and then in car Kanai. yeah cause cause when, when you said the college line that's what i was just talking to my brother about like you don't see that vibe like on martin no more like it was back then you used to you that was in your face you 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 seen the hbcus being represented in a way to where uh, where it it meant something mm -hmm. you know to have that sweater on and i felt like we need to bring that back yeah, well, we um, so it was it was a good time because that's that's when you consider the renaissance of black businesses. You know, you yeah, had black banks. Yeah, uh, we had a black bank in Atlanta at that time, so I was putting my money in there. And then it was like you had John Singleton just came wow. out. So yeah, that's dope. That's dope. John Singleton came out, and this is where he started wearing my hat because he came to Morehouse, and he did a speech, and I gave him a positive wear hat, and he wore it everywhere. So that was always the name of your brand, positive wear. Yeah. So what when I came out. With the T-shirt, it wasn't positive wear then until I came back to L.A. that summer. So what was it? It was just 
A t-shirt brand. Just a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, a t-shirt. Yeah, right. but it was just the idea was crazy. We had hats, and and I'm telling you, man, I was selling those shirts like and I. You could. were making them yourselves. No, I had a silk screener. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was it was unbelievable. Then we eventually we had hats and things like that. But then Positive Wear started up that summer of '91. Wow. And you came up with the name. Yeah, because it was Positive was the name was the bottom of that t-shirt. That's right. Okay. So that's dope. So, now, so the one, I don't know if you have it in here, but the one with the target, right? Mm-hmm. That's the one I hand drew. Mm. Um, wow. And that started the whole, you know, again, that's a play on public enemy because it's like, you know, the target on the positive. But, you know, again, it's like my play is visual. You know, you think it's something violent because that's what you gravitate towards. You like that violent story, but it ain't. It's focusing on the positive. You know yeah. But I love the name of it because we need positive Bro, we do everything we need in this society right now. Right now we need it more than ever. Man. Well, that's yeah. the one thing that, that runs true to everybody on this planet is positive and negative. That's how your mm-hmm. consciousness works. It's wow. Here, you know, and, and you need a balance. I mean, I'm not saying negative is bad, just as good as positive is bad, but it's like when you're imbalanced, that's when you have a problem. But again, it's when how, it's, you, it's how too, you perceive that negative can keep you negative all the time but if you perceive that negative as a stepping stone in growth then it will turn into a positive let, let you me, understand what i mean yeah i mean it's, it's it, life on this planet is about balance the only thing Definitely. is is that you know it's like for me and in my my latest crusade you know i mean when i started back in those days i was trying to explain was that um you know we had a time where we didn't have any black history you know what I'm saying? We weren't proud of ourselves because Man. we were only taught, and seriously, like if you did not go to a black college, your knowledge of black history was, so true. They, you, went, you went from slavery to civil rights and to wherever you are right now. That's so true, because they don't teach a lot of any of that in regular public schools. I mean, no. Yeah, I mean, you know, Hidden Figures was not a story that you that you learned no. until the movie came out. Yeah, exactly. Let me, let me ask you, going back to that Tupac that day, because you know I'm a Tupac fan. Yes, sir. You you hear Pac here? This the I get around Pac, or this the uh, this ain't the uh, I won't deny it. I'm a straight rider. <laughs> it's not that Pac. We 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 with the around and round round that's we my go. Favorite song. That's, that, one of my that's favorite the Pac song. we with, right? That's the favorite. Song. Is that the one where 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 he was wearing your gear about that time or no? I want to say he moved on. Yeah, because this was like this had to be in like ninety three, ninety four. So how does that happen? How does that happen for him? Or no, for how him? does that happen for you and him and the positive You know, world? the crazy thing about that story, um, it was at Andre Risen's house. Okay. So at the time, I had an investor, uh, Mike Haynes, and he was, the, um, he, was a, uh, uh, he was a receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. So it okay. Was, it was two guys. You had you know, Andre Risen and you had uh, Mike Haynes. Mm-hmm. And so obviously, they was partners. So, yeah. they, mm-hmm. you know, I guess maybe there was a conversation that went down. Oh, by the way, Tupac and MC Breed are doing a video at my house. Okay. Now, this house is the same house that, that Left Eye burnt down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Where it is born. Yeah. Okay. And the crazy thing is, DOC is in that, in that video. Wow. So DOC's over there. Um, you know, Left Eye was probably somewhere around there. I don't know. But Anya Rogers is actually in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the back dancing with a positive wear jacket that we gave him. Wow. And then uh, if you look throughout the whole video, it's all positive wear out. But that was the first time I actually sat and met Tupac. What song wow. was that again? I Gotta Get Yours. You Gotta Get Yours. Yes. I Gotta Get Mine. Yeah, that's, he doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so I know where you at. Yeah, yeah I got so you. That's actually MC Breeze song. But yeah, for sure. You know, with Tupac on it. Yeah, but yeah. that thing was big. That wow. was, that and was you like, pulled up and started putting the positive word on everybody. Man, everybody. It's even going Tupac. down. And the that's thing what is, I'm talking now about. you made me want to go look that video. Oh, we going to see it. No, it's going <laughs> to come oh, yeah, up. It's, it's going to come up as soon as when this video, when I skid it, it's going down. Yeah, nah, it's easy. That's what the lovely thing about internet is like you type in Tupac, I mean, you name it, like it pops up. You see him wearing the positive wear t-shirt, which yeah, is cool. That's cool. You yeah, know, that, which, how does that make you feel? As a, Cause you're, you're, that's an accomplishment. It's a big accomplishment. Well, the thing is, he's been the, probably the most notable transcendent artist from the 90s till today. So even exactly. the young guys know Tupac. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. You know, it's, uh, I might tell you like, yeah, I had Redman wearing it, but you'd be like, who's Redman? Or I might tell you I had Positive K wearing it. You'd be like, well, who's Positive K? You know, there's all kind of people that I've had wearing it. Like, you know, there was, uh, remember that rump shaking video? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, zoom, d- just shake your rump. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so Teddy dance- Riley, right? Yeah, yeah. So the dancers that are on that video are wearing positive wear. Okay. Already, man. You know, so, That's what I'm talking about, baby. So back in the 90s, I mean, when I tell you, 
I had BET on lock because, you know, at that summertime, they was constantly interviewing John Singleton. So he yeah. always wore the hat. Wow. You wow. Know, How so. important is it for product placement when you have a clothing brand that you're trying to... Oh, it's essential. I mean, you got to have a lot of tastemakers. At that time, you know, you had John Singleton, Will Smith, which was like mega. You know, I even had Jada, Jada uh, Pinkett wear on uh, um, Different, Different World. Different World? Mm. Yeah, yeah so that's she dope. Wore this stuff, so she was down. I used to actually... You know, we actually knew her. And wow. Then, and it was crazy because I was looking at her team like, man, she is so fine. So <laughs> fine. Oh, you liked her. Like, yeah, that's the one oh, right there. She's so yeah. tiny. She's so yeah, short. Yeah, I'm trying to think, but she just <laughs> felt like she was the one. She is was she insane. shorter than tiny? I'm, I'm, I know no. tiny's short. Yeah, but tiny's ain't tiny. Um... But no, because uh, I don't know. Nah. I've never I've met Tiny, but I have never met I think Jada, probably, so I don't know. She's probably know. a little taller, maybe. You think she? she yeah, is? I think she's a little okay. taller. But Man, how did you how did you make that happen? My brother knew her somehow, and then <laughs> um, one day, I promise you, I was in her house in her apartment in L.A. Oh, you at her house? And my friend, the guy I'm telling you about, <laughs> you might have had an entanglement. Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> But trust, like, I mean, honestly, at that so time. So hanging out with Jada is a big deal. How, what was going on in there? I wouldn't say that I hung out, hung, hung out, but I'm going to tell you, you like. You was in her house? I was definitely in her house. And my, my, my friend was dating her roommate. I think she was a, um, a cheerleader for the Lakers or something like wow. that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so that was cool. So we had reasons for having a conversation. And this was before her and Will got together. Of course. Yes. Of course. In fact, what was, what was really interesting is that we used to do, um, we called it the Black Magic, and we set up our own magic show in the Mirage Hotel. So, mm. the, so when they was actually courting each other, we were missing each other on the elevator. <laughs> wow because it's crazy because I met you know I mean I was cool with both of them yeah. you know wow. what I'm saying yeah. and uh, she tried to come out with a line at one point and uh, so I had a picture with her me and her back in D.C. when we did Black Expo in D.C. oh wow, wow. That's so dope. we knew each other knew of each other but it wasn't like I was like hey Jay let's go kick Good. it you yeah. know what I mean I got things to do she got things to do of course. Day, it was like but it was, just, it was a nice thing but yeah she, she, she you know she was little <laughs> she still is. <laughs> so, so um, I gotta ask you this because you know I, I gotta get to this top three artists of all time. Mm -hmm. I do that to everybody, and, and you're a musician as well. You, how many instru instruments do you play? Drums and the uh, and keyboard. Wow, well, I'm not saying I'm nice on drums. I can play, yeah, the but drums. you can play them. Yeah. Um, top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Well, I would have to say Prince number one. Prince number one. Why? Because he could play 27 instruments. Yeah, that dude is. <laughs> I mean, just the thing about from the fashion element, the dance and the singing, just the creativity and the fact that he's nice okay. on forcing instruments. What crazy. about number two? I would probably have to put like Stevie Wonder. Wow, yeah. that's dope. First, Stevie, first Wonder. Stevie Wonder. And he should, as he should be. Right. He I mean, should be on this show at all times, really. I mean, have you ever watched him play drums? No. Uh, you got to watch that thing that, uh, that the Quest Love just came out with. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's in there blind playing drums like if you close your eyes for a second, you swear you listen to a jazz p percussionist. Wow. wow. He was that crazy. And you you dope on I'm music gonna, as I'm well. I'm gonna definitely look that up. Uh, no, uh, number you three. Watch it. You gotta watch this. That thing yeah. he just came out with Quest Love. Which is watching number that. three. Lord of mercy. I gotta get that number three. That's always the hardest thing. I mean, I don't know. The first person that comes to mind is Michael Jackson. Okay. Um, a lot of people do, Michael. Yeah, but that, you know. That's I ever, so yeah, I get it. I mean, look, because the thing about it, like, he has probably one of the best voices in the game. You know what I'm saying? On, on top of the fact he can dance, but when you think about how this kid had a voice when he was young, yeah, to the day that he died, to the day that he died, that boy, boy, he knew music mm. and he was. So, so what do you think about people who now? I, Trick Daddy said it. Al D came on here and said it. They say that Chris Brown is better than Michael Jackson and people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just telling you what they're saying. And I know you guys, y'all got your mouth all twisted up like, but uh, this is what uh, people are saying now. So do you think Chris Brown is doper uh, than Michael Jackson? No, no, not even close. Why? Because because he dances, he does flips, he does he music. He's got it, a great voice. You, it's just like you know, if you know anything about instrumentation, right? You know, so far as an actual instrument, like a violinist knows between a good violin and a sorry violin. Yeah, because it's a sound that comes out of that violin. Correct. You just can't beat Michael Jackson's voice. That voice is ridiculous. Like nobody can mess with that voice. And to me, the impact that he's had, yes, a lot of people love Chris Brown, but even more, to me, love Michael Jackson. Not only the young, the old, you know, 
even the old old you know <laughs> what michael jackson i'm gonna tell you something and then hold on i've not okay maybe i haven't seen it have chris brown ever touched somebody and they fainted no i don't, I don't know, know. I mean, and this is all, not, all, all I'm saying is Chris honest, Brown is, to be on this whole platform being spoken of in that way is a great compliment in itself. Yes. Yeah, but he's not. He, his music is not transcendent like that. No. You know, it's not like like honestly, if you've never played me another Chris Brown song I'd be good. ever, but you can't roller skate without some rock with you. You can't. Okay, you gotta have it. I mean, you all can't even. Night. You can't even have like all Hall night. You can't even have Halloween without Thriller. Mm. I mean, it's like this dude is, come on, man. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Think about the many years this man has been doing it since day one. I bro. get it. I get it. When he was what? We was like five years old. He was, he was doing James Brown for an interview. Yeah, oh, man, that dude, that, that family is musically drenched. But then some would say because he done his face like that. And because That's he went through all, he and burned his hair up. But it Hold doesn't on, take let me, away. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. All I'm saying is the reason they say that is because they're saying a lot of people that I've talking, spoken to say is that those were plots that influenced his, his platform. These were staged events. What? The, 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 the hair burnings, the, 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 the face being no, his hair know. was burnt. I mean, no, no. Was, I'm just telling yeah. you, this is what some people think. You yeah, know, when, when you look when at you all the, the video with his, his hair sizzling, it's sizzling. <laughs> yeah, but but they saying that, that these things are things that they feel like you know helped his career and pushed his agenda. No, his career was started when he was a young boy. I don't I know. It. I don't know any black family that was not wearing out a Jackson Five. I album. had to beat the Jackson and the, the red mm-hmm. one with Come the on, zippers. Man. Yeah, I had it. There's no way. There's no way that you can. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just. The thing is, is that you got like a different vibration. You know what I mean? When okay. You, when you talk about like old school music, they really, they really talked and really sold you love. Uh, they <clears throat> taught you love in music. Okay. If anything, you got out of I mean, whether you was in love or not, you learned love in music back mm. in the day. Nowadays, mm. you learn about how to get with somebody. Mm-hmm. Kenyatta Sands. Boy, I tell what you, man. What I want to know from Kenyatta Sands, though, you um, call his with- whole name. With your with your brand, right? Mm-hmm. Your brand started started back in ninety one, but then you had stopped doing your brand for uh-huh. a long time. Right, I, I got on it. And then about you that. just I was started really back not too long that. ago. Being a brand, a black brand that Ambassador. that started when all the black brands started. Right. Why did you stop? Um, part of it was personal. Um, my wife wanted to go to uh, get her doctorate, so she couldn't work. And I had to make sure to pay, you know, all the payments were being done at the house and so on and so forth. So I had to kind of, you know, when you're a black owned business and you did not sell your brand to a Jewish Garmento. Ooh. To a what? A, a Jewish, Jewish Garmento. Garmento. Okay. I get it. So because. at that time when you were making this, your brand wasn't big enough to sustain the whole family, so to say. Well, you had to flip your money because I didn't walk out of a situation where I'm sitting on unlimited cash you know what i mean so in other words i started a brand with 300 bucks i didn't start it with three million right so you know you imagine trying to flip that and then i eventually had an investor but he kind of put in money that he got from signage and whatever so it wasn't a really big deal for him but it was never enough money to keep flipping and keep flipping right. and keep flipping for you to be like all right when, when am i ever going to be straight you're not because you're trying to make your you're trying to get to where your competition is my competition is in the hundreds of millions how am I gonna get there with you know two hundred thousand, whatever the case is? So I got to keep flipping it, flipping it. So as an entrepreneur, you're not paying your rent because you're no, like, no, no, no. You, you know, real boss put his money up. We know that. Yeah, that so. That's a part but of can business. A, but can a small person like that, starting from three hundred dollars, somebody with a dream of a T-shirt or whatever, get to that place? Yeah. And how long will it take to get to that? They have place? done it. No. Yes. Tell no. me, what well, Damon okay, John, well, how, how does how does Fubu no. turn into a a, a, a okay. But he didn't start yeah. with three hundred dollars. Is that what you're saying? He, no, he did not start with a. Tr- he I, started small. No, nah, he had okay. So listen, Damon John, I believe they raised over a hundred thousand dollars to get their first product made in the streets, but then okay. they got signed by Samsung, mm-hmm. and Samsung is the biggest, you know, one of the biggest companies in the world. Right. They already had stores in Japan. And Japan was on hip hop big, real big at that time. So the timing couldn't have been more perfect for Damon John for them to, to do what they had to do. But they signed with some big players. So in order for you to get big, you have to sign with P 
people they were money. With, with, with a bank. With money and re- and resources. Okay. So there was no way that Damon John, no, they didn't they didn't get that big with just their, you know, with just a, So, you know. but with, you had such a great product. How comes you didn't sign with? I just couldn't. I didn't want to move to New York. All the guys that were Jewish that owned companies were in New York didn't want to move to New York. That mm-hmm. was not f- that fun. Straight and, and West the only, Side. The only West Side And company, you got offers, I'm sure. No, I mean, not really, but, uh, but I probably could But he could have if he'd have shopped it around like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. wasn't even about to even go there. No. Right? Not right? at all. I, and, and uh, I mean, the question becomes, do you want to, do, do you really want to, you want to keep owning what you have. I love what you just said. I love the fact that you stay true to who you were. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And that you still right now are, are have creative control, you own the product, and you still, you know, you basically, um, great guy. I love it, man. Uh, what about, uh, did so, you feel, let me say this, did you feel like uh, Carl Kanai and uh, all those guys were competitors? Uh, absolutely. We, okay. all, we all wanted to be the, on the top. Okay. But those guys, their story is a little different. See, Cross Colors left a $20 million company. Cross Colors left a $20 million company? Carl Jones was ownership in this company called Surf Fetish. And Surf Fetish at that time was big because, like I said, the whole surf skate was huge. $20 million company. Yeah. Left them, had money. This guy already had 19 Harleys living up in Beverly Hills and so on. I'm thinking he's like me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking like, well, if you can make four million in the first year, I can make four million in the first year. This was the kind of money we making. I'm I'm on I'm on that. But they was like, trust me, the that kind of money and that kind of knowledge, totally different ball game. Wow. You know, you're wow. talking hundreds of dollars to hundreds to millions of dollars, and you're like, dude, there's no way you can what, let me um, ask you this, did Carl Kanai, you and any of those guys on the West Coast, did y'all ever try to come together to do anything? No. I think every, Why? I think everybody wanted to be the king. I think that's the way it go. You know, what everybody saying? wanted I know to be the king. Like the even 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 though they worked to each other, I'm sure that Carl wanted to smash Carl, cross colors. Well, I brought Carl up to you uh, uh, here recently, and uh, when I did, I, I could still feel that competitive uh, spirit in you. Yeah, I don't. You know. <laughs> Come on, so, man. Like, I don't know like you, that bad, I'm not, I'm not really you love your clothes, though, and you're saying, you're proud, I, listen, man. I, Carl and I is so far he away. He dope, though. He dope, man. What I'm saying is he's so much bigger, bigger than, than you. I mean, it's like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> when I met him, dude, like, he, he was way dope. out there with it, man. Like, <laughs> but, like, but my which question, I came out at the same time. Yeah, you did. But at, because but the, he stopped. And he didn't yeah. sign with a big person and stuff like okay, that. Okay, so because so Carl Kanai, Carl Kanai was a small guy, right? And signed with Cross Colors, See, and Cross, that's what blew him up. And that's what made him big, right? So he had the backing of Cross Colors, but then when the whole bank folded on all of them, he bouncing, from what I understand, got to deal with Skechers because at mm-hmm. that time Skechers was doing the shoes, mm-hmm. um, but Cross Colors went to funk because one of the biggest companies they had was Merry Go Round. So when Merry Go Round went bankrupt. That killed everything for cross colors. One last question I have for you: um, You started back the brand right now. Where? What's your vision for your brand? So uh, I started the brand last year again. Okay. I mean, obviously we was. What inspired you to start it back anyway? Well, I've always had it in my background. It's mm-hmm. just that you know, for me, there was a lot of things I wanted to learn. You okay. know, from, so my journey went from owning that, but there's like stores that I've never. There were stores I had to go see for myself and learn, but then there's Thousands of stories I did not know. And trust me, there are stories that you would not know unless you are a sales rep. Wow. Okay. So it was dope that you even went to So the what's your vision for your company? So my vision for the company is to be that voice for the positive. Straight up. Like there's a there's a lot of a lot of times when you have the programmer focusing strictly on negative imagery, this is what you get. I have mm-hmm. I live in my community. I'm not gonna promote guns on my clothing. Because I live in my community. I don't want dangerous children around me. I mean, come on. That's not smart. That's not conducive to having a safe environment. I'm not mm-hmm. going to tell your child that he needs to have an AK-47. Why would I do that? Let me, let me ask one more question before we get off here. Um, when Nipsey Hussle died in you guys' community, um, I, um, how, did you, how do you feel that affected everything? Or do, do, do you think it even had an effect on anything? Oh, it definitely had an effect. I mean, I think that, you know, um, you got to imagine he was probably one of the biggest figures 
Um, in fact, he wasn't all that big until he died. It was exactly. That, that's how this industry is. It's, it's crazy. Like he blew up once he passed but away. But the funny thing is, is like I knew of Nipsey Nipsey Hussle. I've seen him. I seen his crowds when he did. Like, it was an event I went to, and it was like, oh, we got Nipsey Hussle performing. And man, I mean, the whole crowd went bananas. So I had a lot of respect for him, but I wasn't really f familiar with his music. Mm -hmm. And then I started seeing him all over the place, and I was like, you know, he's actually a very good, fashionable-looking kind of guy. Like he looks dope. Like if he walks in the room, you're like, who's that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. His style, yeah. I've yeah, I've been in the room with him, yeah, yeah. so I definitely got got that. Yeah. yeah. Um, One more thing. What? With, hold on, hold on. <laughs> No, because it was a, sort of like a part two to the first question I asked you. No, um, since you started back, are you looking for that bank to come on board with your brand now to elevate it? Well, actually, the fortunate thing is I have the bank. Ooh, um, ooh, ooh. So it's kind of like, at this point, it's like, it's just a matter of building it the right way. You and know? you are the sole owner? Yes. That's dope. I like that. And, okay. and, and, and I definitely, I'm, I'm sporting positive wear. I'm selling positive wear. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I already made the decision. I mean, just to really but I wasn't going to do it until you came on my show. To make it really clear to everybody, understand that the positive people, they're great people doing great things every single day. But we know more about Kodak Black than, than all the other great mm -hmm. people that are doing big things out there. Mm -hmm. All the positive people that don't do no harm to nobody. The, you know, the religious people, the people who go out there every day, work every day, they make their family right. You know what I mean? There's people that need something to say that about themselves. Uh -huh. But let me tell you what we've said on this show many, many times over. Because, yes, we do um, interview a lot of entertainers. And I tell them all the time, you have something very powerful, which is this mic. Right. That can reach so many people through your music. And I've always begged them, I always said, please put something positive in there. You know what I mean? Because you're touching not only children, you're touching adults. Music can turn your day from a bad day to a good day. Anytime we're feeling down, what we do, we turn on whether gospel, rap, whatever, and you get into your feelings, you change your mood. You can. I've heard DJs on here say they could be working in the clubs, you know, doing their thing, and a fight break out. And just because of the type of music they change, it changes the atmosphere, the fight stops, and everybody goes back to normal. People don't realize how powerful and I didn't realize how powerful this mic and how powerful music is until I started interviewing wow and well, I mean I hope we have another second but just to, to piggyback on what you're saying that is real okay because <laughs> music has been part of every culture forever mm -hmm. you know it's the kind of stuff that you use to communicate you know when you have like I'm black and I'm proud trust me how that made people feel just, I get, get chills just saying that exactly you know okay. what I'm saying but you feel black power I'm gonna do my thing they know that the, the programmers know to program you to be so the thing is you just gotta understand this it really boils down to this this country is predicated on money true people came here to make money they done stole people from Africa to make more money they could have hired their own folks to, 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 to pick some cotton they was like no I want free labor <laughs> Right? Exactly. Okay, it ain't personal, it's money. Mm -hmm. You know, all that chaos that we're dealing with is because it makes money. You know, all the, the good units and all that don't make money. It's, the, it. it's the chaos. Let me ask you this before we uh, go. Uh, if you could go back, Kenyatta, to your 17-year-old um, self or 18-year-old self, um, what would you say? How would you advise yourself? How would you advise yourself? Knowing the things you've known now. Correct. The cool thing is I had great advisors. <laughs> you know, my parents, my mom was good, you know, and, you know. They what just, would you say? Um, they, just set a, they just set a real good example. So what would I say to my kids to yeah. have fun? Just like I said, these kids here, it's like, it's not, you know, I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm just trying to tell you that I grew up having fun. You know, all this stuff that y'all doing, I don't, I don't get it. Like me personally, dancing was fun to me. Going to a club was fun to me. Going to Greek Fest. There's no festivals no more. There's no They're on their phone doing video games all day and that's fun to them. Man, when I was 17 years old, I couldn't wait to go to college. Why? Because they had homecomings. They had, you had like, when I went to Morehouse, I'm like, oh my God, you had the Morehouse homecoming. You had, we was writing, we was Clark Atlanta U, Spelman. We had Morris Brown. We had uh, ITC. All this in one area. Then you had Freaknicks. Then you had homecomings you had this so on man listen growing up was young fun that's what you need to think about you know think about will smith's summertime song just think mm -hmm. about that for a second mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's real 
that's real homegrown. Our communities, even though sometimes we had our whatever, but if you go to any old school community, I always tell you, always have fun. Mm-hmm. Have fun. Enjoy hey, yourself. Kenyatta, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love you, brother. Yes. I love y'all and, too, and man. And we definitely, uh, I see you in Vegas. In about what eight or nine days, we gotta go to our party. How you think oh yeah, Vegas we're doing a party. Gonna, yeah. So uh, is that gonna be on the first or second day? Well, it's gonna is be on. Is Ti gonna be there? Oh, it's gonna be on Wednesday. It's gonna be on Wednesday. Is Ti? Is Tip coming? We gonna yeah, be there? We gonna have to? We gonna have to change the plan? It's Listen, two shows. It's, it's two shows. Is Tip coming? Hold on. I, oh. I'm keep asking Miss Tip coming. Is Tip coming? I don't think so. Nah, oh, dang man, it don't matter. I don't see him too many but times. But on Wednesday, that, this would be the first time y'all done a party on Wednesday. It's always the. Yeah, but this is the second. this is the first time COVID hit and and the show the whole Vegas thing got Shut stopped yeah. in fifty years. So right. hey, man, this is a big deal. Say, man, thank you so much, man. We love you, bro. Um, hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. Boss oh, Talk. Yeah.